Hello guys, how's it going? Um, I am going to do another computer build as you guys can see. Uh, forgive me, I'm using my iPhone for this video because my main camera over there is completely dead and I do not have the charger for it. Uh, you know, go me, right? So, I'm using my iPhone, so, you know, bear with me. It might be a little shaky. But, um, yeah, as you can see, I'm doing another computer build, but this one's going to be a little different. Uh, previously, all of my other builds have been Intel-based. Uh, they've always been uh, Pentium i3, i5, you know, those kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, processors and stuff. And they've always been ATX. So this is going to be a little bit of change of pace. I'm going with an AMD A6 6400, uh, which is uh, just a pretty, it's a pretty uh, decent chip, it, especially for the money. I think this thing was only like... Um, I think it was only like 65 bucks or something. So, good bang for the buck. Uh, this thing is, yeah, this is pretty, pretty nice. Uh, it's a 4.1 gigahertz max turbo, 3.9 gigahertz base processor. Dual core, so it'll be good. The computer, or the uh, person I'm building this for uh, does not need a uh, fast computer. So, well, it doesn't need a, you know, a super computer. So, yeah, all they do is basically browse the internet. So, that's what this is going to be good for. Um, so yeah, this is also going to be mini ITX. I went with the MSI FM2 A75 IA E53. Yeah, that's quite the model number there. Uh, mini ITX motherboard, um, socket FM2. It's quite nice actually. Um, it should be good for this build. I think this was like 90 bucks, so should be decent. Never done a mini ITX build before, so this should be interesting. So, um, for the power supply, we have uh, Intec, I believe this is EarthWatts, uh, it's a uh, oh, strictly power. Ooh. Uh, that means it's low end. <laughs> it's a 450 watt. Uh, it's got active PFC, which is nice, and I believe this is 80 plus. Yeah, this is a nice power supply. It only costs like 50 bucks, too. So, quite, ha quite satisfied with this. This should be more than enough um, oomph for this kind of build. Uh, for the case, I went with the Cooler Master Elite 120 Advanced. Uh, mini ITX case. Never worked with one of these before, so that should be interesting. And then, of course, we have our classic um, LG M Disc um, optical drive. I've used these in every one of my builds, and they're just they're decent. Ooh, like 25 bucks too. So yeah. Oh, and I also have a. Uh, a uh, D-Link wireless end adapter. I'm not sure if the person I'm building this for uses Wi-Fi, but whatever. It was only like 15 bucks, so why not? So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start like I always do. Uh, start unboxing the motherboard, put the CPU on it, the RAM, etc. And then we will go from there. So, I will be right Okay, back. so upon removal of the uh, motherboard here, here we have our mini ITX motherboard. This thing is quite small. I'm very, uh, uh, you know, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm very surprised uh, with how teeny tiny this thing is. What is that? Is that a Wi-Fi module? Oh boy. If that is, if that is, then, you know, I kind of bought that wireless adapter for nothing. But anyway, uh, going in the box, we have the uh, driver disc, which no one uses. Uh, we have the back plate for the uh, cooler, which is uh, cool. We have uh, mounting hardware. This is probably what I'm going to use because uh, I'm using the stock heatsink that comes with the A6. Oh, yep. This board has built-in Wi-Fi. Well, whatever. At least I have a, uh, a spare wireless adapter, which is kind of nice. Uh, we have the backplate. Ooh, it's colored. I like these colored backplates. Usually don't see these on boards this cheap, but cool. We have the... Uh, whoa, that's a big user guy. Jeez. This is uh, large. And then this is quick insulation guide. No one needs that. Well, we don't. We don't need that because I know how to do it. But you know. Anyway, yeah. Let me go ahead and get the motherboard out of the static, and I'll be right back. All right. I have both the CPU and the RAM ready to go. This is quite nice looking RAM, I must say. Like that is just. I like it. It's subtle, but it's not like ugly. It's very nice. And here is the processor. It is pinned, as you can see. This takes me back to the days of old Intel. Um, you know, that's kind of funny, but yeah, anyway, there is the CPU. Oh, and we got a sticker with it too. I'm definitely putting that on there because I love stickers. Everybody should love stickers. Stickers are amazing. So, um, let's go ahead and lift the lever here. Let's go ahead and take our 
CPU. Try not to bend any pins here. That would be good. Okay, so there is the triangle. Uh, okay, so it's going to go in like like these. It's going to go in this way. Man, I'm just worried about breaking the, or, um, you know, uh, bending the pins on the CPU. It's kind of funny. I prefer uh, LGA uh, sockets, but whatever. This is nice. Okay, she's in. That was easy. Let's go ahead and open up the RAM. Uh, oh, it's only a, uh, that's kind of interesting. It's only one-sided uh, clip, so I guess you just, yeah, I've never seen that before. Well, I've seen it before, but I've never, you know, uh, uh, had experience with it. So, it's kind of nice. Um, anyway, let me go ahead and like, focus this. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. Again, no autofocus using an iPhone. So, you know. But, uh, let's go see if we can uh, shove this baby in there. Why is it not going in? Hey. Hey, you, little ram stick. You should... Okay, there we go. There we go. Yep. Uh-huh. There we go. Okay, there we are. Um, that it's nice looking, I must say. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, you know mess with this mounting hardware for the uh, cooler. Here is the cooler. It's very tiny. These are even more pathetic than the Intel ones, I think. Um, they might be a little better. Who knows? But there's the thermal paste in kind of a box pattern. It's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have to uh, remove this mounting hardware and install the two brackets as seen here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Well, that took forever. This bracket is the stupidest design I have ever seen. It has these metal rings inside this plastic frame. Focus, you motherfucker. There we go. It has these metal rings inside these plastic frame, and when you try to unscrew the standoffs because they screwed them in so damn tight, this thing just spins around and elongates the plastic. It took me like 20 minutes to get this damn thing off. Jeez. Stupid mounting system. But, I did get the uh, stock cooler on, and yeah, here it is. Ready to go. So, the CPU and the RAM are finally in the system. So, now, in typical, uh, you know, my fashion. Let's go ahead and open the case. Gotta check for uh, leprechauns. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this thing up. Doodly doo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, there's the case. Let me see if I can take it out. Here it is. This is a nice little case for 50 bucks. I mean, can't really complain. There's where the power supply goes. Motherboard. Expansion cards if you need them. But we don't because this is a very budget-oriented build. And we don't need any of that. But yeah, here we go. I believe it opens... Oh, I think the whole shell comes off all around. So let's go ahead and uh, open it up. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to open it up and get the motherboard in, and then I'll be oh, back. Oh, here it is, as as seen uh, before I put the uh, power supply in and block everything off. I figured I'd show this. Now, yeah, cable management is not going to be amazing, but it's better than nothing, I think. Um, you know, got all your USB and everything. Got a little fan there. Kind of nice. Um, I think there's a fan in the front, too. Yeah, there is. So... Um, one thing I just realized, <laughs> I am without a hard drive or SATA cables. I'm not sure if I have SATA cables inside my motherboard box in there. I think I do. But as for the hard drive, I don't have a hard drive. I did not buy one. This is why we don't do things when we're sick. You forget things and then you get screwed. So now I have to go back to the store and buy a hard drive. I'm not going to do that tonight though. Um, I'll do it tomorrow and uh, get all the software side hooked up tomorrow. And uh, yeah. So that's going to be that. I'll build the rest of the computer. I'll test it, see if it works. But uh, I have to stop here until I get a hard drive. So, yeah, anyway. Stupid me. Well, I got her to work <laughs> after some, uh, you know, uh, fighting with it. Turns out the RAM was not seated properly. That RAM right there. Uh, I don't like that one-sided clip thing. You still have to push it down on both sides, especially, or at least with this motherboard. So, I don't know. I don't like it. It's kind of pointless, but... She's up and running now. 
Uh, we got a AMD A6 with Radeon graphics, uh, 3.9 gigahertz CPU. I'm gonna leave the RAM at 1333 because that's what uh, I'm doing. And yeah, there we go. The only thing I'm missing, as I stated before, is a hard drive. I need to go buy one. So I don't know. I'm just gonna let this thing run uh, like this for a while, and then tomorrow I will likely go buy a hard drive to uh, you know start doing the software on this thing because that's a that's part of it too. So yep, there's the computer bill. For okay, now. so here we are, several days later. <laughs> I have been uh, quite sick lately, so that's why I have not gotten around to completing this build yet. But, um, yeah, so, um, as, as you guys know, um, I forgot to buy a hard drive for this computer, um, and that's why I have not finished the build quite yet, uh, and I have not gotten around to buying one until now, uh, but I picked up this, uh, Western Digital 500 gigabyte uh, blue drive, and, uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to be using. This is a decent drive, so I figured why not. And this is a budget build, so I didn't really want to go with the WD Black or anything. It's just kind of, uh, excessive for this build, but, yeah, once I shove a hard drive in there, everything will be okay, and then I have to, uh, you know, do all the software and stuff. But anyway, let me open this and get it in there, and then I will get back to you guys. Okay, she is in. And there it is. Okay, so the computer is now completely done, which is nice. <laughs> Finally, it's not incomplete. And, uh, yeah, ready to go. So let me go ahead and put the cover on it, and uh, okay, we're we good to go now. Come on, camera, focus. There we go. So there we go, um, I need to get a mouse, but I do need to configure this, I think. Plug that in, I think it's F2 to get into the BIOS, I'm not sure though. There's nothing to boot from, so that's why it was like that, but... Is it F1? What the hell's the boot? Like, what the hell's the BIOS on this thing? I don't know. I'll figure it All out. Right. I got a mouse. Uh, I got that. Um, I think... I think it's uh, F, F11 or something for the boot menu. I'm not sure, though. Actually, I think it'll just boot, since this, the CD is the only bootable device. So. Yep, there it goes. I think... I don't know. Yep, there we go. Oh, finally glad to get this computer up and running. I would actually not mind owning a computer like this little mini ITX build. Anyway, this computer will be good for the person who's going to. <sighs> Man, that's a loud CPU fan. <laughs> that's that little AMD fan. Or actually, I think that's the drive. Yeah, that could be the drive, too. I don't know. There's a lot of fans in this thing, though. There's one in the front, one on the side, one in the power supply. Okay, well, anyway, I will uh, go ahead and end it here, I guess. Well, actually, I'll install Windows 7, and then I'll make another clip. Alrighty, so Windows is installed. I'm not going to waste you guys' time with installing software and stuff, so that is it. That is going to conclude the Mini ITX build video. So thank you guys for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed.